Welcome back. Today is the last day of Cancer Screen Week, and according to the American Cancer Society, one in three people are affected by cancer in the U.S. So Dr. Sunil Patel, a hematologist and oncologist with Kelsey Seabold Clinic, joins us this morning to talk more about the benefits of regular cancer screenings. Good morning, doctor. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning, Denise. All right, so let's talk about the benefits of regular cancer screening, especially for, you know, those who may think, hey, I'm fine, don't have any symptoms. Why is it so important? Yeah, Denise, cancer screening is critically important. I can't stress it enough. The reason it's so important is because there are three ways we deal with cancer, right? We have uh, the, the ability to prevent cancers when we can, um, screen for cancers and find them early, and then treat cancers when they occur. So screening is, is a critical element, right? If we can find cancers early, then we have the best chance and the best opportunity to deal with them when they're caught early, right? Absolutely. And that's when we have the best chance to cure them and really deal with them. Right, so let's talk about some of those cancer screenings that people need to get and at what age? Yeah, so, um, so for women, um, I'd like to, to highlight two areas where women really need to be screened and, and, and dial in on those. One is, is breast cancer. So women um, beginning at age 40, Need to start talking with their doctors about um, considering mammography and breast exams to be screened uh, for breast cancer. Cervical cancer is the other one. Um, and, and for women starting around age 25, they need to start talking with their doctors about having um, pap smears and having HPV testing, where uh, nowadays it only needs to be done every five years if you do a specific type of HPV DNA testing. So once every five years, you need to have cervical cancer screening. And then for men, uh, we need to think about prostate cancer screening starting at around age 50 for most men. And then there are some higher risk men uh, who may need to be screened earlier than that at ages 40 or 45. And then for everyone, men and women, we need to think about colorectal cancer screening starting around age 45, where we need to think about either colonoscopy or um, a, a DNA or blood-based testing of stool. Um, and there's different ways we can do colon cancer screening that we want people to start talking to their doctors about around age 45. Now, is there any particular group that may be uh, more at risk for cancer than others? There are, Denise. So uh, there are a few groups um, that we should probably highlight. One is folks who have a strong family history of cancer. So if you've got multiple family members or people in your family in your family who are especially young when they were diagnosed with cancer, that's something to discuss with your doctor so that you can be considered for the possibility of further screening or additional testing to see if you might be especially high risk. And you might come see doctors like myself to talk that through and then decide if more screening would be right for you. Now, and then, go ahead, Denise. Sorry, go ahead. Another group that we might want to highlight is uh, is, is uh, African American men who have a slightly higher risk of prostate cancer. Those folks, um, you know, might want to get screened by their doctors a little bit earlier in their 40s uh, for prostate cancer. And then the third third group to highlight would be smokers, right? If you're a smoker, really talk to your doctor because lung cancer screening might be right for you with low dose CT scans if you've been smoking for more than about 20 years or so. Gotcha. Now, most cancer screenings are covered by insurance, but what if you don't have insurance? Uh, what's the best way to explore free or low cost options for screenings? Yeah, so there are um, a free and low cost options for screening here in Houston. So there are clinics like the Rose Clinic and, and other resources that are available for folks who are, um, are low income. And then there can be free screening available through there. All right. And any you know ways that you need to prepare before your appointment, before we go, what do people need to know? Yeah, I think some folks might be a little bit intimidated by cancer screening, right? Some of the tests that, uh, that we consider doing um, can be uncomfortable in some cases. And so it's important for, for us as doctors to explain what these tests are really like. So what I'd want my patients to know is that mammograms, uh, um, of course, many women can experience a little bit of discomfort from a mammogram. Um, but once you go through them, then of course, many women uh, get used to that. They understand that, well, it's not maybe as bad as I was expecting, right? And so, and of course, the, the, the folks who do these procedures are really sensitive about making them as comfortable as possible for people. So try not to be too worried about, about the discomfort part of it, since that's a, a really um, very temporary thing. And of course, the other thing that, that makes people nervous about screening tests is what are we going to find, right? Like, are we going to find something that we need to be worried about and start to deal with? But what I want to encourage people to remember is that the majority of our screening tests come back negative, right? It's just to reinsure and reassure ourselves that we are um, healthy, in fact. And so it's helpful to do them so that we can make sure that, that we're not missing something, right? And if we right. do find something, then we can really start dealing with it early when we have the best shot. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for having this important discussion with us this morning, Dr. Patel. Have a great one. Thank you, Denise.